Hello everyone! Welcome to my live stream. Yeah, fix my my uh, screen real quick. Yeah, that's better. I didn't have it angled enough. Uh, anyway, it's Monday, which means it's it is Monday, right? Oh God, it is Monday. I <laughs> got very confused about what day of the week it was. It's Monday, which means it's time for Inktober fifty two. Uh. I have my Inktober kit ready to go. This this week's prompt is a little, uh, feels a little tough for me, but I'm just gonna do the first thing. Whenever it's tough, uh, and I can't find some clever thing, I just go for the first easy thing that I like, and so that's what I'm gonna do today for, for this prompt, which is box. There's a couple different ways you could interpret it, but uh, I'm gonna interpret it as the physical object. Um, but first I will show my uh, Inktober kit, especially for anybody who hasn't watched one of these before. I've been using the same kit all year. Most of the items came from the Inktober retreat last October, including this Inktober moleskin uh, sketchbook. And this set of zebra mild liners and sarasa pens. And these two um, zebra brush pens, they both have black ink and a medium sized tip on this end, but the red one also has a small sized tip on the opposite end. And then a couple more items that I added that weren't from the retreat. Pencil sharpener and a pencil, my favorite Palomino black wing pencil. And then I will just uh, fold this up and set it aside until I'm ready to pack back up after today. Okay, and that goes over there. And for anybody who has not watched one of these before, I not only used the prompt, the weekly official prompt for Inktober 52, uh, which I guess if nobody knows what Inktober 52 is, or if, uh, not nobody, but if some people don't know what Inktober 52 is, it's like Inktober, which is the monthly challenge with the, the once a year through the month of October challenge to draw an ink drawing every single day for 31 days. Inktober is draw 52 drawings over the whole course of a year, so one drawing a week. So I'm doing that. Um, here's, here's last week's crazy. I think it turned out really good though, even though it's a really ridiculous. Uh, anyway, um, let's flip to the new new spread and do I want to use the whole so I was just literally gonna draw a box and I was thinking of having uh, because what I was gonna get at is that I don't just use the prompt I have my own theme of Griffins because I'm using this Inktober 52 as a way to practice my inking skills because for the illustrated novels I'm working on um, they're in a griffin world, and so there's tons of griffins, and I want the uh, internal illustrations to be uh, black and white, so basically ink drawings, because that's a lot easier to print, um, and then I can make more illustrations per book, because it won't take forever, because it takes like twice as long, if not longer, to do a colored illustration, um, but anyway, uh, this is... This is also serving as practice for that, so that's why I have the Griffin theme, and I always try to relate it to Griffins. So, for this box prompt, I'm just going to do super literal basic box, uh, just like a cube, or maybe I'll do it a more of a rectangle to fit within this format. Work across both pages, of work across the spread. And then I was just gonna do like a stylized griffin on the box as if it's like a decorative box. So let's just do that. And I'm just gonna freehand it. I'm not going to worry about really precise, um, precise straight lines or trying to get the perspective all perfect or anything. I'm just going to just, I'm just gonna have fun with it. So, I ended up drawing it so big that it's gonna go off of the, off of the page, which is fine. Okay, so got my basic box. 
I'm kind of imagining, I don't know if it's because I recently, I think it was last month, watched all the Indiana Jones movies. <laughs> well, except for the new one, because that one's not out on Disney Plus yet. Uh, I don't go to the movie theater anymore. I'm so tired of people talking during the movies or being on their phone during the movies and it's so distracting. I'm like, forget it. I'm not going to pay 40 bucks to go to the movies. I can wait a few months and enjoy my time and I already have the Disney Plus subscription or whatever, you know, whatever thing. Anyway, so I have not watched that last one, but I feel like making this a, like a wooden crate because I watched all those and that's just what is in my mind is like those wooden crates are, they first start with a uh, store the Ark of the Covenant in and, and stuff so I'm just gonna make it one of those that's what I've been imagining when I was like mm, I can just do a box when I was like what am I gonna do for box the other option was doing bo like box like fighting I don't know I'm not in the mood for to draw any fighting. So I would rather draw something a little more uh, boring. <laughs> it's like a, I, I was imagining it. I was like, oh, they could have their uh, dukes up and everything. Little griffin. Well, not little, but, <laughs> you know, it could be a griffin hand instead of a, a human hand and stuff. But, mm, just didn't appeal to me. And there's no specific reason why I should draw that than more than drawing like a crate so I just do the thing that I want enjoy doing uh, whatever appealed to me more which is drawing this box and this is actually quite fun because I like thinking of like how is this box built like it's not just a box like a cube it's made out of wood like, one I'm imagining in my head, so it's made out of wood, and it's like, what kind of wood? Like, is this going to be a bunch of, like, slats, or is this more like a, a big thing of plywood or something? And I'm thinking that this will be a big thing of plywood across here, but then we've got these parts, and so they'll be like, I'm going to draw them right now. There's, I'm going to put, like, there's some nails, maybe screws, but some sort of round hardware holding these pieces together. This is why uh, this was more appealing to me because I have there's something about thinking about the way something so basic like a box could because there's so many different ways you could put it together. You could draw it like a classic pirate's treasure chest and that's totally different from this and like here I have drawn a top that I'm imagining that they nail on so this top piece is just like some big old slab of uh, plywood or something so there's that and then yeah let's even uh let's put some nails in the top too and I'm drawing these nails these ones are a little more circular but these ones are at much the ones along the top are at a much greater angle so instead of being like this like this so I'm drawing them more as ovals instead and then you might not even be able to see some of them because of the angle Yeah, like this corner, this goes off the page so you can't even see that one. Okay, and then some other things to think about is, so if these are pieces of wood that are nailed or screwed onto a big thing of plywood, well, they're going to be sticking out. So let's draw some extra lines showing that these are sticking out. And we're looking from top down, so you wouldn't be able to see that extra line of it. Um, so like this angle, how it's coming together like this, like this is the top and then this is the side. You wouldn't be able to see that because you're looking at it from the top, but this one you would be able to see because again, you're looking at it from the top. So we'll draw that line here to show that these are not paper thin pieces of wood. They're like nice thick, maybe half inch, half inch pieces of wood. And so the same thing here, you wouldn't be able to see this, uh, what would you call that? Ridge? Edge? Oh, edge. Yeah, that's what you'd call it. You wouldn't be able to see this edge. You can see it here. We wouldn't be able to see it here because of you're looking more on this angle. Okay, so these are coming together nice and flush. I'm imagining whoever built this box cut it, cut that nice uh, 
45 degree angle so that they would meet like this. But then on this side, you should be able to see this, this edge here. Okay, so that's good. Um, now, how do I want to do it? So I'm imagining, I was imagining like some griffin art or either art or it's, maybe I'll look up some reference images to see if I can find a box painted wooden crate. Let's see what that brings up. Oh, it brought up the kind of stuff I thought it would be, like little fruit baskets and stuff. What if I put dragon? Painted wooden crate dragon. Oh, people just like paint whatever. Oh, this is more the kind of thing I was thinking of though. This is on Etsy. Let's see. Well, there's some cool stuff on here, but uh, here's a good here's a good example. This is the kind of thing I was thinking of. Oh, this is gonna. Oh, thank you. It's just some sort of decorative thing. So this is a dragon. So I'll look up Griffin Heraldry because that's more of a heraldry style dragon right there. So I'll look for a Griffin style heraldry because that is actually Griffin Heraldry. Griffins are actually used in lots of. Oh cool, there's even a page on Wikipedia called List of Griffins as Mascots and in Heraldry. There's a whole Wikipedia page of that. National symbols? Cool. Ah, Latvia. Oh, Lithuania. Man, you guys are awesome. I'll just read it directly from uh, Wikipedia. National symbols here. I'll show you this cool picture. This is the says, Greater State Arms of Latvia. The coat of arms of Latvia has a griffin on the shield and a griffin as a supporter. The griffin on the shield is holding a sword and there's a symbol of, oh, I'm going to butcher this, but, uh, Vidzim. Vidzim? Vidzime? Uh, and Latgale, or Latgale, I don't know, uh, <laughs> Eastern Latvia. One of the historical territories making up modern-day Latvia. The coat of arms of Lithuania also features a white griffin as a supporter. Cool. So, let me see if there are any other pictures. Oh, so cute. Pomerania in Germany. Pomeranian heraldic griffin. Look at it. It's my favorite color, too. Red. That is so cool. Okay, I'm just trying to get an idea of how are these heraldic style griffins generally. Look at this is a nice big list. Look at them. So cool. I love griffins so much. <laughs> wow, it's so cool. I'm trying to stay focused on the design of the griffins because I'm starting to look at like, oh, where are these places? Switzerland, Germany, UK, and like, no, no, don't look at that. We're just trying to look at the, at the design. <laughs> this is a very unique design. I wonder if I can make this bigger. Look at how interesting the legs are. They've got, they've got these very big fluffies on the front part of the leg for the lion part of it. And then the the waist is just like comically small. So it's very interesting. At first, I thought that it had four four hind legs or something, but ooh, that could be a good idea. That would be interesting. Maybe I'll do that for mine because it's such a long space. I could do like a slip near type. You know, slip near is the um, the Nordic. A mythological horse with like eight legs or something. We'll do a Slipnir, but it's uh, instead of Slipnir, it's a it's a griffin. Instead of a horse, it's a griffin. Okay, I think I've looked at enough examples. I'll just pick one to have up, just to give me uh, just a. Now I like this Pomeranian one. <laughs> 
So I'll just have this one up as inspiration and guidance. And, but that one is, I believe that's called rampant when it's up ways. I actually really love heraldry. It kind of makes me wish I had a heraldry book. I've learned a little bit about it over the years, uh, especially when looking at my own heritage and learning about my family crest and stuff. I'm fixing my eraser. It's not sticking out far enough, so <laughs> pulling this eraser out so that it sticks out farther. Okay, there we go. Well, that's better. Okay, anyway. Anyway, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's called rampant when it's up like that. But I don't remember all of the, I don't remember all of the things. Still, so uh, let's put the head over here. Most of them were facing the other way, facing this way. But let's put the head over here because we're going to have it down. I don't know what the term is for that. <laughs> Not rampant. Down. And we we're making it like a long one to have eight legs. Uh, if we did that, then the head would be all alone and it would be cut off like perfectly at the neck. And I kind of don't like that, so... I'm going to have it facing this way. So I'm going to actually going to turn the head. So instead of, so with these rampant ones, the head is kind of up almost like a, like a cobra raising its head up like this. I'm going to have the head going down to fit in the space like this. But I really like the curvy shape so I'm gonna try to keep that somehow we'll just see how we can do it because even the tails are just going like whew, whew, they're just filling up the space and then the wings maybe can so the it's very interesting the wing is like just like one big piece with the arm it's not really differentiated, just like arm, 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 wing comes out. Like almost as if it's just growing out of the elbow. Okay, so we'll do an arm and the claws. It's got three front, one on the back. Many birds are have that configuration. Not all though, some have two in the front and two in the back. And I think some have all four in the front, maybe like penguins? And they're always, in heraldry, they're always so that you can see every single toe. There's not really any, like, perspective that makes a certain toe disappear or anything. Because the point is to show the creature, not to show some sort of realism or anything. Okay, so if we have this arm... It's coming straight out. So that's doing. It's got this almost like a zombie, like kind of thing, or you know, like the Frankenstein's monster with just the arms hanging out. But if we're going to have these feathers, so there's a few coming down, but the rest grow backwards. It's almost like a I don't know flamenco dancer. I think that's what it's called, flamenco dancer with the big puffy sleeves or. Something but uh, but with a griffin. So let's have the wing coming up. We'll just have it follow the box like this and come back like this. And the wings are not very big. They don't really get much wider than the rest of the arm. So let's see. So I'm just gonna keep adding. It's actually kind of nice not really worry about the anatomy of it. <laughs> it's just about getting the design. It's, it's graphic design. So we'll just have the wing coming out like that. Okay, and then these, a lot of these griffins have this sort of bubble forehead. bubble forehead just comes down. Bubble forehead, but then it comes, it comes in a little point at the back, and then they've got those ears that... I don't like that for my griffins, but we're doing the heraldry griffin. I only like to put ears on my griffin if it... Uh, not even ears, but if it's like a great horned owl is the 
bird part, you know, then I will put these little things on there. But we're doing heraldry ones, so we'll just we'll just do it the way that the way that they like from the what is this? What, I wonder where this came from, like the Middle Ages. Oh, I really want a book. I really want a book about the heraldry now. Okay, so there's chests coming down. And along the chest, for at least for this design, it's all smooth. But along the back of the neck, it's all sticking up feathers. Which makes sense because if it's curving like this, the stuff on the inside would be pressed against one another and the stuff on the outside would be pulled away from one another. Okay, and I bet that this is a modern iteration. The reference image I'm looking at is a modern iteration anyway. Okay. Oh yeah, I forgot I wanted to do a slip near style one, but there's not really room actually. <laughs> Just go ahead and do it normal. Okay, so it comes up and to the waist and there's a the back leg. They do have very, they still have the very fluffy, furry legs. I wonder why that is. So much fluffy, fluffy fur. And we're just gonna... Hmm, I'm gonna make this work. Okay, maybe this one's flying. <laughs> I guess I can't really fit the back foot in there, so this one is flying. And that is why the foot is all straight. <laughs> this is not how I expected to draw it. Okay, but this is, here comes the fun part. I love these curly, fluffy tails. They pretty much all seem to have them. So I'm just gonna have some fun. It's like it curls and fluffs like it's a, not a fur, but like a plant growing. So very, uh, like, vines. Okay, and then we'll draw the other knee here. Let's see. I'm not sure how to fit the other leg in the, uh, okay, we'll just do it very simply. Just like that. As you can see, I've never drawn a heraldry th nothing before. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's probably fine even without having showing both legs, but anyway, let's see. Uh, yeah, because I'm going to hold it up again. There's only one wing. So I think it's probably fine with the other limbs as well to that you don't have to show every single limb either like people will understand. So actually I'm going to just go ahead and erase this back leg because it's kind of in the way of the rest of this design. It'll be fine without it. Okay. Where's my trash can? And my sweeper. <gasps> Wolf, hello! How are you? It's great to see you. Have you have you been uh have you joined me for the Inktober 52 before? I can't remember. Maybe that's when you first came back. How are you doing? Do you have a great weekend? I hope that you did. I'm gonna sharpen my pencil a little bit. Okay, so decided to not even have the back leg. Just have it one, this heraldry griffin is just going to show one side. Man, I really like this. Uh, this is actually really fun. Like, I would love to do more designs like this. I think I'm ready to just, uh, unless I want to put something here. 
but I wasn't really imagining it and we're already about halfway through the stream so I think that I will just go ahead and just ink this. So I sharpen my pencil to do just a couple little lines with it. Well, I sharpen my pencil and it will be, it's all protected, so with this nice cap thingy, so uh, it will be nice and sharp for next week. Oh, good, good. Wolf says, I, I don't believe I've seen it before. I had a great chill weekend. You? I'm so glad that you had a chill weekend. That's so nice. I think that's the best that if that for me I love it when that's what the weekend is just relax anyway <laughs> I didn't have a chill weekend because I had the SCBWI uh, summer conference it was a virtual conference so at least I could be at home so I was able to just you know you didn't have to worry about what you're wearing or anything like that but uh, it wasn't chill though because there was so uh, it's so overwhelming by the end. I forgot that that happened last year. <laughs> like, it's just, it's exhausting, actually. And, um, but it was a good weekend still, even if it was exhausting, because I was able to uh, find other creators like me, and we started a new uh, Discord uh, specifically, I was trying to find some fellow vegan creators um, because that kind of thing will, whatever kind of work you're working on, it can, it like influences what you want to do and the way you want to say things. And so I feel, was feeling kind of lonely. <laughs> like, I don't know anybody who's making work like me and stuff. And so I was able to meet four other people. And so now we've got a Discord going. And so. Uh, it was definitely a productive, productive weekend. But it was funny to me today because I was like, well, I'll just take it easy until streaming time and just do whatever I feel like doing because I'm so tired and I, I, like, I had a hard time falling asleep last night and stuff. I just started just falling into my uh, good, good habits, falling into my habits, and I just did all my normal stuff for Monday anyway, so... <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh. Hmm. I don't think so. I'm trying to think what it might have been instead. So Wolf says, sounded like you really enjoyed the convention. And, not trying to pry at all, but didn't you use to stream with your partner? I didn't. So I'm wondering what that might have been. Um... I'm trying to think if there was ever a time where I had like a guest on, but I don't think so. I mean, my husband has streamed a little bit in the past on his own. So maybe that was it. He streamed Suikoden for a little, a very short period. Does that sound familiar? Watching some uh, Suikoden streaming? I'm just freehanding this box again, even though it's not, the lines aren't very straight. I don't, uh, again, I don't feel like getting super precise with my, bro my box. <laughs> so, I guess the, the, even though I did my, even though I ended up just falling into habits and doing my normal Monday work stuff, I'm still feeling tired, which is why I'm like, eh, who needs a ruler today? I'm just gonna have wobbly lines. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I wonder. Well, I mean, all my streams are up on YouTube. <laughs> I wonder what that could have been. I mean, there could have just been a time where somebody popped in real quick. Didn't realize I was streaming or something. I do have a sign on my door now that says on air so that whenever I'm streaming or I'm doing any like a video conference or I do tutoring as well. So, uh, so anytime I'm on a video thing, I have a sign now so that everybody knows I'm on air. Oh, 
Oh, I didn't do this. Oh, there's a couple. There's still a couple lines of box left. I remember one of the things that was so satisfying when I was first figuring out how to draw things a little more realistically as a kid was learning how to draw a cube. So maybe that's why this is a, when I had this prompt, actually the funnest sounding thing was drawing a really basic boring object because it's so fun. So I am going to switch from this. So I used the fine liner for the box because the fine liner is all one size basically. Unlike a brush pen where you get lots of sizes really easily, uh, a size of line. So for the box I actually like, I feel that that lends the, the very square precise box feeling to the box by using a, a tool that basically does just one precise size. But for this, this heraldic griffin that I've drawn on the side of the box, I'm going to switch to the small brush pen because I want this to look more like it's a decoration. Oh, Exie is here too. Hello. Oh, Exie the artist. I love your name change. <laughs> oh, and thank you. Thank you. I got to hold on. I got to put the cap on it. Thank you so much. Actually subscribed at tier one. They subscribed for nine months. Nine months straight. Thank you very much. Oh, and thank you for your kind words. Exy says, it looks so good. How are you doing? Did you have a good weekend? Or did you at least make it through the weekend? Making it through. I think sometimes that's good enough. Oh, I missed a few nails here. These nails over here. I didn't miss this whole section. Maybe it's because this the head. I'm like so happy with this part. I could just take this part of this sketch and I'm like, yes, this looks so cool. Okay, anyway, <laughs> forgot about these. <laughs> forgot about these nails here. Let's get the nails in. I feel like I was in the middle of a conversation. Uh, so if I stopped saying something, uh and anybody was talking to me and I forgot to answer a question or uh, something. Just remind me. <laughs> I feel like I just suddenly, I'm like an edge of sketch and then somebody just shook the edge of sketch and it's blank now. So. <laughs> oh, it was great. Excellent. Finally a time to play a game I've been waiting a long time. Baldur's Gate 3. Ooh, that's a famous, I've never played it, but that is like a big name. So how did you like it? So you finally had time to, to play it, and you said that your weekend was great, so I assume that the game was great. Is it, what kind of, what kind of, so like I know the name, and that's about it. What kind of game is it? What kind of play? Play, not play style. I guess what kind of game is it is the best question to ask. Man, I love this Griffin design. I love this Pomerania in Germany. There, I use their griffin uh, mascot or the city mascot. So cool. As a reference for this. Oh, I'm getting so, so excited this stream and suddenly feel very tired. <laughs> it's because I couldn't sleep very well last night. Probably just, it's like one of those times when you're so tired that you can't sleep. I think that that's what happened. It was the first time in the Pokemon Sleep app that I did not get a hundred for my sleep score. I only got the 93 or 97. Can't remember, but. Oh, fun. Oh, maybe I will like it then. I love turn-based. Exy says it's a turn-based role-play game. Oh. It's like a D&D &D campaign as a video game. Okay, I can imagine that. I've never played D&D &D myself, but I have so many people who play D&D. &D. Including, well, or play tabletop role-playing games, not just D&D. &D. Of course, D&D &D is just like the classic, the original. 
at all kinds of stuff, including my husband. So I hear all kinds of different stuff about different games. That seems like it would be really fun. Well, no, no wonder it's such a big name. Do you, so as a D&D &D campaign, as a video game, did you play like, does it have multiplayer? Did you play it as multiplayer? Or just single player? I'm wondering if that's like a really obvious question. Anybody who's played it, they're like, oh, duh, but <laughs> I've never played it before, so. Oh, <laughs> XC says it has multiplayer, but I have no friends playing it. <laughs> well, that's cool, though, that you can play it by yourself, too, because um, I always struggle with games where you have to have somebody else to play it with, and then, and then you can find no one, and then it really sucks, because, you know, the game is so fun, but you can only play with someone else, you have to rely on someone else, and it kind of sucks. So it's nice when you can still play it by yourself or like with a uh, CPU, you know, with a computer. It's funny when I was big into uh, EverQuest Online Adventures, that MM, uh, MMO on PlayStation 2, and like my whole family was super obsessed with it. Like we would fight, including my mom would fight over the PS2, so that eventually we each had a PS2, or as the years passed, we each ended up with our own PS2 so that we could play. And even though it was like the massively multiplayer online, I would just play by myself. <laughs> I just wanted to, I enjoyed sneaking from, because I always would play a rogue, and then I would just enjoy trying to, without leveling up very much, like, could I sneak my way into these high level, like, level 100 towns using just all my stealth moves and very careful movement and observation of all of the, the mobs on the map and stuff and like... So even when I'm playing a multiplayer, massive multiplayer online game, I want to play it by myself, but it's still fun to be around the other people and know that there's real other people playing. Oh, good. So why do you like it better? Xy says, yeah, I like this way better, actually. Maybe it's because you don't have to wait for anyone. That's another thing. Even if you have people to play with, do you have to wait for them and stuff? And it's kind of like, oh, come on. <laughs> well, it says, ha, all my friends want to play it single player. Trying to decide if I feel like playing trying single player. In the Baldur's Gate 3, you're also playing it, or am I mis misunderstanding? Seems like it's the kind of game I could play. Although I'm, my goal this year is to like get all the things done in Animal Crossing and feel like I'm done with Animal Crossing. <laughs> I made it my goal to like get all the cool clothes I wanted and uh, get as many badges as possible, the achievements from like the nook, the nook points and stuff. So I've got, what, two more bug off events and yeah, I've got, well, I've got a bunch of those achievements to get, but I've been, I only have two more fish, two more fish to complete the fish. I have four more bugs to complete the bugs. Ah, yes, the game just came out officially. So have you, so Wolf, have you tried playing it at all? Or like, have you only played it multiplayer and you're thinking about trying single player? Or is it that you haven't played it at all yet and you want to see if you want to try it starting with single player? is <laughs> first of all, waiting for others for sure and deciding what to do by myself, trying to play as helpful and as good as possible. Not sure if I could do that with other people deciding things. Yeah, it's a completely different experience to play games with other people. 
And it can be it can be really good, but it can also be really frustrating. I like to play like board games and card games and stuff at parties or uh, family gatherings and, and things. And But sometimes I'm like, mm, I really need a break from this. I'm <laughs> getting really frustrated or whatever. You know, like you can't decide, uh, you can't agree on the rules or, you know, some sort of thing like that. Those kind of things can happen sometimes and it's... But then other times it's like super fun. Like we have... It, among me, my husband, and my siblings, we have some, like, super favorite board games that were just like, yes, let's play that one. Or, like, Mario Party on the Switch. And it's nice on Mario Party because if you can't agree with the, the you can't agree with what the rules mean, it's okay because the game knows. <laughs> so you just can't, you can't misinterpret the rules because it's just going to do what it's going to do. So we play a lot of Mario Party. <laughs> Mario Party is just fun. That's not the reason why, but it's a nice part compared to playing a game where you read the instructions and you're like, hmm. Oh, I'm playing Sunhaven multiplayer, though. What is that? I have not heard of that one. Sunhaven. Is it on PC? Con console etc is it also a is it also a turn-based game well it says i played multiplayer and alpha but that was a couple years ago now i love board games also <laughs> yes i love board games too i love i just love playing games with people but sometimes it's nice to play by yourself too. Yeah, it's weird with the MMOs. It's the opposite for me. I like the populated environment, but I like uh, just doing my own thing. I, I know what it is. It's like a Breath of the Wild, what they captured with Breath of the Wild. It's that I liked exploring such a huge world. Okay, where are we on time? We got about 15 minutes. So I'm just adding like some shading and I think I'm going to, so I'm just, look, I'm looking over the piece to make sure there's not anything more important that I would want to do. Yeah, okay, so I'm going to change my mind. I was going to do hatching all on this side to give it some, some shading to uh, give it more dimension through the shading, but. I wanted this to be a wooden box, so actually I'm just going to go around and have fun putting some wood grain on it. So, And it's so fun to draw wood grain because it can just be whatever. Like Once you have the basic idea of how, it, how wood grain tends to be, it's just such an organic shape with just a few rules. And then you can just do whatever and it's so, uh, it's so relaxing. And it just looks like wood grain and you don't have to have a reference image or anything. Sunhaven is on PC, says Wolf. Is Oh, sounds awesome. I love it. Although, everyone tells me... Oh, well, I didn't finish reading what Wolf said. Is a farming game similar to Stardew? I like to read the messages, so for anybody watching the recording later... Um... But yeah, Stardew Valley, tons of people recommend that to me. Uh, but I have the, I play, goodness, what is it called? It used to be Harvest Moon, but now that's a different thing. There's all this stuff that happened around Harvest Moon. They brought it back to the original name from Japanese, because now Harvest Moon is like terrible because it's actually, anyway. <laughs> Okay, that's what I'm going to talk about. What is that called? Stories of Seasons. To story story of Seasons. Very similar. It's a, the same kind of farming thing, so that's what I, I play. And I have a file that I haven't finished. It's so funny. One of the ones on the Switch. And I got so far into it, I finally got a kid. Because you you can get married and get a kid, like... I don't know, you get a kid like you get a dog. <laughs> you unlocked dogs and then you unlock a kid. I finally got a kid. 
And then, um, what happened? Some other game came out. I think Fire Emblem Three Houses came out. And so <laughs> I got the kid and I haven't played it since. Oh, like, almost as if getting the kid was the reason why I stopped playing. This is not why, but... Yeah, so that's on, that's on my list. Someday I want to finish that. Magical Melodies is on Steam now. Unless I read it wrong. Is that... Um, is that a new Harvest, not Harvest Moon, what is it called? Because I just got, is it the, hold on. Hold on, I'm reaching. Nah, this uh, can't be it. I got this one. See, look, I just had it sitting on my desk waiting for me. This is the port remake of my very first Harvest Moon game, A Wonderful Life. And I married the hippie guy. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> anyway, put that back on my desk. Old Harvest Moon game. Okay, yeah. Oh, that was the best one. You like that one too? I like the, um, one of my favorite parts in that one was going and digging in the, the dig site to get like, uh, what did you get? You got like, did you get bones? I can't even remember what you got. I think you got like ancient artifacts and stuff. Like little magatama and like those uh, clay, those clay figures. Oh goodness. It's been so long. It's been so long. Which system was that on? Was that on GameCube? Oh man. I cannot remember. Oh, yes! Well, says this must have been what I'd seen. I was just thinking of the dig site. Oh, yeah, GameCube. Ah, so long ago. It was so good I played that game. And I feel like, I felt like at the time that I missed something because there was always supposed to be something happened with the fairy or something. Oh, I can't remember, but I was like, should I restart my game? Because I'm like an old woman now and nothing is happening. And every day I come and do my farm and stuff and like, but there's nothing new. Nothing new ever happens anymore. So I wonder if I like totally missed something. Or if that's just how it was that I just got to the point where there is nothing new and so like my kid was all grown up. Well, I guess I'll find out now because that was my very first one. Of that, I mean, of even that style of game. So, uh, maybe I'll find out when I start, when I start that one. But I want to finish with the, the family that I got in that other one. I can never remember all the little subtitles for the games. For all these, uh, Story of Seasons games. It's interesting how many different kind of games we're talking about today. I love games. I love gaming. There's so so much variety. There's something for everybody in games. <laughs> you love Stardew. Well, once I finish these ones that I bought, I guess I'm just gonna have to try it. Cause like pretty much everybody tells me. Anybody who's played it tells me, oh you're gonna love it. Wolf also says, uh, also check out Dinkum, which is more like Animal Crossing. Interesting. What it, what is that on? PC or I play most stuff on my switch so if it's on switch that's the uh, that gives me a lot more uh, chance to play it because I like to be able to play in lots of different positions like sitting down or laying down or laying on my stomach or you know whatever I don't play uh, I used to play so much uh, maple story on my PC and on my laptop but just I I'm so restricted to a single basic kind of sitting and it's really rough on my back so okay so this is gonna be fun so I've got this wood grain on the top here so since this is a plank of wood and then it's been cut so I'm just going to use the lines that I've drawn here to inform lines coming down the side Because it wouldn't be the same swirly pattern if it's been cut through. Okay, and 
there's like no lines coming out there. And then same thing over here. Man, having so much fun with this wood grain. I gotta keep an eye on the time. I mean, we still got eight minutes, so there's no worries. But worst case scenario, I'll just so I'll just do this outside part first, and then if I run out of time, it'll just be like, oh well, this was the whole thing was painted, not just the griffin, and then that will be like, that's why there's no wood grain there. Telling the story of this box. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm reading your messages backwards. This is the most recent message from Wolf says, I hate how fast you just draw that wood grain. It looks so good. The the trick for me is like I pick a knot, like a, a like a knot on a tree where there was a branch, you know. And then just draw it out like ripples in water. And then you can just uh I mean, it doesn't look like it's from any specific tree, so I think it's really nice when people draw like, oh, this clearly looks like oak or whatever, because it really, it really does change, but you can just, uh, just like pick a spot and just do the ripples out, and it's so fun, it's so, uh, Maybe cathartic is a little too strong of a word, but it really is. It's just so relaxing. It's like a zen tangle. I've never done one, but that's what it feels like zen tangle is like. So anyway, the, the message from Wolf before that, I only have PC, sadly. Stardew is on Switch, though, I believe. Yeah, it definitely is, because Nintendo also thinks I would like Stardew Valley, so it's been recommending it to me as well. I mean, it does look good. It has the kind of graphics I like. It's just that I've already spent money on these other games, so I want to finish them first. That's the only... That's really the only reason I haven't started it. I understand being mobile now. I'm always outside with the pup, so my iPad has replaced my PC for the most part. Oh, are you playing games on your... on your iPad? Like... Uh console and PC style games on no iPad. That's cool. Like I have, I don't have an iPad, but when I was in art school for my illustration degree, everybody was getting the iPad and the Apple pen. Like that was the thing. Everybody wanted that and the procreate. There were a few of us doing other things, but so many people we're doing all of their projects on iPad. And I know lots of professionals do as well. Not everybody. And Photoshop is still the industry standard. At least as of my... Uh, well, no, I went to the conference. And that's what they said there too. Like, it's pretty much... You have to be able to save it in Photoshop format at least. And present, your, and present the work in Photoshop format. But, yeah. I never thought of, so what I was uh, asking about it for was I never thought of it as a p potential gaming tool as well. So fun to draw the wood grain. It's almost like you, so you draw the knot and then you're just drawing the ripples as if you threw a stone into a pool. Let's see, four minutes left. Hmm. Thinking about whether I want to be like this whole thing is painted in or do like the wood grain behind the griffin. But four minutes is quite a bit of time. So I think that I will do it behind the griffin. I just got to do these little angled ones showing that the, the ledge, the edge after you turn. Man, I'm not able to explain what I'm saying, but you know, it's an angle. So <laughs> it's cut at an angle. 
So I'm going to draw these first. Okay, now I just need to be careful to pay attention to what is inside the griffin and what is outside so that I don't accidentally put some wood grain inside because the idea is that this is painted onto the box. Another thing that's nice about drawing wood grain is that if you sort of so like just now I my hand bumped a little for some reason. I don't even know exactly what happened, but my hand went err and then it's like it's totally fine because it's wood grain, so it might have such a an organic little bump in it. And so another thing I'm going to be trying to do is connect to this wood grain behind the griffin. So keeping in mind that okay, this line should be continuing. And this line should be continuing. And even though the lines are continuing through, I'm trying not to touch them too much, especially around the face here where there's so much going on with the griffin. And put a tiny bit of space in between the wood grain line and the line of the griffin and then that way it's just a little less visually confusing for the viewer. That's something I learned from comics. Oh, thank you! <laughs> That's an especially kind comment. <laughs> Exy says looking perfect because I totally drew this like all no rulers or anything, so the lines are really wobbly for the box, even though I'm drawing it like it's this really well, like nicely cut, all these angles fit perfectly together. But actually it's like all over the place and like me, me. <laughs> it's very wobbly. Thank you for your kind words. Okay, yep, it's starting to get a little bit confusing. Keeping, keeping these lines. Okay, so there's these lines coming here. So there, so this is such a big space. I'm not gonna be like, okay, this should be here, but I'm gonna try to fit in like a two or three lines here and then bring them back here. Let's put a little knot here to break it up a little bit. There. Oh, what do you know? It's exactly time. And I just and I finished it right on time. Okay. Nice. So let me just write what I usually write. So I'm writing the Inktober 52. And this was called box. The prompt was box. And then I think I'm just writing the date. Yep. So it's the 7th of August, which is still a bit surprising. We are way, we are really into the second half of the year. <laughs> what is this a cute little kitty thing? You used it at the beginning. Hype, hype. So cute. <laughs> oh, next is using my favorite Wingo. Wingo! You are welcome! Exy says, thank you very much for the stream. See you next time. Yes, I hope to see you on Wednesday. I'll be back on Wednesday. Regular old lucky dip time. There's a little close up of my box plus Griffin. A very literal interpretation of both my of the prompt and my personal my personal theme of Griffins. Okay, that's it for today. I'll be back on Wednesday, same time as usual for a lucky dip. I hope to see you then. Uh, either way, I hope you have a great rest of your day, uh, and thank you for watching.